SMGs are a major part of Call of Duty every single year. We get new ones, but that doesn't mean they're all good. And today, we're going to take a trip through COD history and look at some of the worst of the worst. What is up, everybody? Jimmy, your chaos. Welcome back to the Every COD series. Today, it's not the best in Every COD. Today, it's the worst. This is the series, and we're going to update a list of the absolute worst SMGs in every single Call of Duty multiplayer. Keep in mind, DLC weapons, 100% eligible for this list this time around, so you let me know your thoughts on our picks down in the comments. Drop a like on this video. Make sure you're subscribed with those notifications fully, fully turned on. We start off at Call of Duty 4. The Scorpion. Easy pick. Default pick. I've talked a lot of crap about this gun over the years, and I don't take any of it back. It was meant to be this light-hitting but super accurate SMG that most Call of Duty games have, but it had so many drawbacks. It was not worth your time. It could hit for up to 50 base damage, but it could also drop all the way down to 20 per shot without stopping power, which, if you do the math, made it a five-shot kill while only firing at 857 rounds per minute with a 20-round mag, no extended mag attachment. Plus, the reload animation, it was super long. Could not be reload canceled, meaning you were stuck with a two and a half second long animation every single time you hit the reload button. That is, unless you wanted to dry reload, which was even longer. The Scorpion was super accurate and it barely had any recoil. That was good, but the damage was so low and the magazine was so tiny, it made it one of the worst guns in the game by far, one of the worst SMGs in the original Modern Warfare. Now we arrive at World at War. The Thompson, listen, listen, I love the Thompson. Iconic weapon, super fun to use. Honestly, it's not even a bad gun, but compared to the other SMGs in this game, it was the weakest. The World at War Thompson had a 20 round mag. 40 round drum attachment was helpful, yes, and it could hit between 20 and 40 base damage and it fired up to 750 rounds per minute. Now the damage profile wasn't horrible, but it wasn't amazing. And since that recoil was a tad on the bouncy side, a lot of people passed right over it. Plus the other SMGs in the game, come on. The MP40, broken PPSH, meat grinder type 100, laser beam. The Thompson was fun to use, yes. Certainly viable but it wasn't going to outperform the other SMGs at your disposal, so here it is on the list. Before we move on, guys, if you get anything from G2A.com, use code CHAOS for some cash back. The link is at the top of the description. Now we arrive at the original Modern Warfare 2 in 2009. Has to be the Mini Uzi, another instance where the gun was viable, and if you knew how to use it, you were happy. But when compared to other SMGs in the game, the Modern Warfare 2 Mini Uzi left a lot to be desired. I think it was the worst in the SMG category. It fired at 952 rounds per minute. And if you ran rapid fire, this thing spit bullets downrange at 1200 rounds per minute. Also had a 32 round default mag, pretty generous compared to the other SMGs at your disposal. But the issues, they were the damage and the recoil, neither of which was good. The base damage was 20 to 30 per shot. The recoil, it was high, meaning you were only able to use this thing effectively at close range. And I know an SMG is only supposed to be able to shine at close range, but this was Modern Warfare 2. You had SMGs like the UMP-45 and the Vector, which you could use. They were viable for mid-range or even longer. Then you had the Mini Uzi, and it was never going to get the job done. If the enemy was more than 10 feet away, it was certainly not the worst gun in Modern Warfare 2, but it was the worst SMG. Next up is Black Ops. Has to be the Uzi. I'm just letting you know, I am not going to be nice. It's awful, and I think it makes a good argument for being one of the worst SMGs in COD history. Has some of the ugliest iron sights ever, pathetic damage per shot, has some of the highest recoil in any Black Ops game to date. The only positive of this gun was the fact that it came with a 32 round default magazine, but it's not like you were actually gonna kill anybody, so who cares? It was hot garbage. Black Ops 1 had a lot of really bad SMGs, but the other ones, they at least had something going for them. Cleaner iron sights, lower recoil, stuff like that. The Uzi? had all of the worst traits for an SMG mixed into one. It was horribly inaccurate, had horrendous visibility, and the base damage was tied for being the lowest in the entire SMG category. Those are facts. The gun sucked. You know it, I know it. Don't even try to argue that something else in the game was worse. I know it has a little fan club and they like to pop up when I, when I crap on this gun, but no. Modern Warfare 3 2011. The MP5. Now... It's typically seen as a sweaty SMG with a lot of damage potential and versatility. Back in 2011, it was one of the least used guns in the game because it was truly, truly terrible. This is far and away the worst MP5 in COD history, and I'm still honestly surprised it was as bad as it was and it never got buffed at all. It was unlocked by default, came with a 30 round mag, fired under 900 rounds per minute, but the recoil, the recoil was bouncy, the damage, it was bad at point blank range. The MP5 hit for 42 damage, making it a three shot kill. It's not bad. 
but the base damage dropped all the way down to 20, meaning you were usually hitting people five times before you dropped them. And since that recoil we talked about was so bouncy and inconsistent, that was hard to do. Plus, 30 round magazine was the smallest in the SMG category. The reload animation wasn't short. Huge problem since you were reloading constantly. The 2011 MP5 was not good, and it was drastically outclassed by literally every other SMG in the game. Again, I'm not sure why Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer made the MP5 this bad, and I doubt, I mean, I, I, well, I don't doubt. I, I wonder why they never chose to buff it, but they didn't. Black Ops 2. Here comes another hate group, I know it. The Cheekum CQB. I debated between the fart cannon and the marshmallow shooter for a while, but I bet you a hundred bucks that most of you watching this video now know exactly which two guns I'm talking about with those two nicknames. And in case you don't know, the Cheekum was the fart cannon. The PDW-57 was the marshmallow shooter. Now the PDW barely did any damage. It kicked like a mule. At least had it had a giant magazine, had some solid clip potential, the Cheekum, on the other hand, was a burst fire SMG with very, very awkward recoil patterns, made it hard to use consistently. The damage potential, it was decent. Basically, every Black Ops 2 gun was viable in one way or another, but the Cheekum was far and away the least popular weapon in the SMG category because even though it had better DPS than the PDW, it was way harder to use. And the payoff for learning the recoil and the burst timing, it wasn't worth it. And I know, here we come with the little bandwagon uh, fan group that's going to say it was the best. No, it wasn't. And if you happen to use the PDW in the first week or two of Black Ops 2, it was the best. So they, at least it had that going for it. The Cheekum has always sucked. COD Ghosts. The CBJMS. Now, Ghosts had a very quick time to kill. And because of that, basically every gun was viable because basically every gun could hit somebody in two to three times before you got killed. Now, obviously, certain guns and Ghosts were way better than others. But when I say the CBJ was a bad gun... I need you to know, I'm just saying that relative to other SMGs, because it's still viable in a lot of situations. Was it ever going to hold a candle to the Imtar, the Ripper, the Bison? No, it wasn't. It was basically this game's equivalent of an Uzi. So it had this super high fire rate, moderate damage at the cost of heavy recoil, and it could melt people up close. But then it lost its effectiveness once you hit mid-range, and since most of Ghost Combat took place at mid-range or longer, big maps, you didn't see it online much. Not terrible, all things considered, but definitely the worst SMG in that game. Advanced Warfare. This is easy. The AMR9. I don't know who told Sledgehammer that we needed a five-round burst SMG in the game, but I think whoever they were, they lied. 35-round default mag. Cool. Five-round burst. First ever in COD history. Cool. In theory, it should have been good. But you were constantly getting screwed over by that awkward timing between the bursts while your enemies bunny hopped in between your trigger pulls. And it's not like the AMR9 was even a consistent damage powerhouse because it felt like you could hit somebody four to five times and they were still coming at you. Yeah, I mean, it hit for as little as 19 damage per shot. It sucked. It's one of the only guns in Advanced Warfare that didn't actually have a variant that made it worth using. Seriously, did you ever see anybody running any version of this gun back in Advanced Warfare? No, you didn't. Black Ops 3. The AK-74U. Now, I've had a lot of SMGs to pick from here, and you may have expected me to throw the HD-40. I know, I've called that gun one of the worst DLC weapons in history, but you know what? I've been letting the Black Ops 3 AK-74U off the hook for a while, so today we course correct. Because I totally forgot this version of it even existed, and now that I've made myself familiar with it again, I don't know why Treyarch even bothered. It was added to the game over a year and a half after launch. 19 damage. It only fired at 650 rounds per minute. It kicked like a mule. Hefty recoil, slow rate of fire, but the Black Ops 3 version, it, it, I mean, it did such little damage, you couldn't justify it. You were always trying to get a three-shot kill, but usually it would take four to five shots to drop somebody in a game like Black Ops 3 where most of the SMGs were just way better. Everybody had thrust drums. It was just too slow to be competitive. Infinite Warfare. The HVR. This gun looked and felt like it was supposed to be a futuristic UMP-45, and while I'm, bore, I'm on board with that idea, the execution was rough. Slow fire rate, very bouncy recoil, low base damage, default mag 26 rounds, not sure why that number. Even if you put extended on the HVR, you got 39 bullets, once again, really weird. Low for a gun that needed this many shots to kill, plus the classic UMP-45 was also in the game, under the classic category, and it was basically just the HVR, but better in every single way. So there was literally... No reason for you to use the HVR once you unlocked its older brother. COD World War II. The WAF-28. Did you know there were 20 SMGs in COD World War II once all the DLC was released? 
And I'm going to admit that many of those weapons, there's probably going to be some conflicting opinions here, but if I had to pick one SMG that stood out to me particularly being lame, I'm going to go with the WAF. Launch weapon. People were down on basically since the game came out and Sledgehammer never really did anything to pull it out of the mud. It fired quickly, but it kicked like a mule, barely did any damage, and on top of all that, the magazine wasn't big enough to support a spray and pray strategy, and the reload animation was kind of long, so why would you use it? It's not exactly the kind of thing you want in a Call of Duty game if you ask me. 20 SMGs. Black Ops 4. The MX-9. This was a, this was a well-balanced game for the most part, but the MX-9 to me, left a bit to be desired compared to the other SMGs. Starting submachine gun, featured a pretty bulky design, rather obstructive iron sights in return for this middle-of-the-road SMG that didn't do anything super, but it wasn't really poor either. It was the definition of an average weapon. Wasn't used all that much once you unlocked other weapons in the SMG category. Even lower-tier Black Ops 4 SMGs like the GKS had some kind of special quirk that made them unique. But the MX? It was just average. Underwhelming. And I'm going to say it was the worst in the game. Modern Warfare 2019. The Striker 45. Has to be one of the most underwhelming DLC weapons of all time. It looked like the UMP 45. It functioned like the UMP 45. And yet it had one of the worst time to kills in the entire game, which is the exact opposite of what you want from a UMP 45. Plus, the magazine was 25 rounds by default. Nobody wanted to run extended mags on every class simply because the base mag was so bad. It wasn't good. We're going to move on. Black Ops Cold War. The Milano 821. It's one of those SMGs that always felt like it should have been better. Low fire rate, hit hard, didn't quite hit hard enough after the first few patches to justify it using it over other SMGs. I'm all for slow firing, hard hitting SMGs. But if you were going to use one in Black Ops Cold War, you were probably picking up the Bullfrog or the AK-74U. It was just way harder to get the Milano to a point of effectiveness over the other SMGs in the category. I know you could kit it out for sure, but yeah, Vanguard, the Sten. The Sten is an iconic World War II weapon. It's appeared in tons of Call of Duty games, but it's hard to find one that was actually worse than the one in Vanguard. That's awkward because it was also the most customizable in COD history. You would think the ability to load up on the Sten with 10 attachments would have been good. No. Horrible recoil, low rate of fire, damage that didn't even come close to making up for any of that. It just sucked. It did. It was an insult to the awesome legacy of the Sten SMG. Modern Warfare 2 2022, the MX-9 again. I find it kind of funny that Infinity Ward made their own SMG called the MX-9 that had nothing to do with the MX-9 SMG that Treyarch put in Black Ops 4. But you know what? It still wasn't good. In fact, it's probably worse than the Black Ops 4 version. You tell me. You decide. The MX-9 in Modern Warfare 2 is the new universe's version of the AUG. And it's in the SMG category like it was in Modern Warfare 2019. But also, like the 2019 version, the 2022 version, it wasn't good. I mean, uh, you, you would have to load it up with attachments. Even then, it was a mixed bag. Most people would agree the MX-9 is one of the worst guns in Modern Warfare 2. So here it is. And we arrive at Modern Warfare 3, 2023 has to go to the AMR-9. So this version of the AMR-9 is not the same as the Advanced Warfare version in the sense it's not a five-round burst. However, there's actually a way to build this weapon out and convert it to a five-round burst SMG. So does that mean it's a remake of the Advanced Warfare version or a new interpretation of the weapon? Does this mean Advanced Warfare is canon to the Modern Warfare universe? Honestly, I don't know. But I'd much rather talk about Call of Duty timeline theories than the AMR-9 in Modern Warfare 3 because... It was terrible. And there you have it, my friends. The worst SMG in every single Call of Duty to date. Let me know where you agree. Let me know where you disagree. And let me know what you want to see on the Every Series next. I'll see you guys soon.